Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special live here on YouTube. Today we are going to be learning, we're going to be talking about the Baby Lock Sasha Co. machine. And what that is, <clears throat> it's a machine that only does the hand look quilt stitch or a Sasha Co. hand look stitch. You're going to learn all about that. The first thing we're going to do and we're going to get started, we are going to we are going to actually wind us a bobbin. I'm going to switch to another camera. And by the way, my name is Richard Tharp. I'm a Baby Lock National Educator and welcome to my studio. And we're going to get started. Okay. So here it is. I have a quilt that's partially quilted right here. And this is what we're going to be sewing on today. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, so this is the Baby Lock Sasha Co. machine. It has two levers. This side controls <clears throat> the stitch length from two to five millimeters. This side controls the spacing in between the stitches from two to five millimeters. There is no upper thread. There's only a bobbin thread. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to wind a bobbin. And I'm going to use this really cool, fancy metallic thread. This is uh, Madeira Glamour thread. It's a 12 weight metallic. So this machine loves metallic threads. If you like metallic threads, this would be an awesome machine for you. Okay. So I'm going to put this back here and we're going to wind this a bobbin. Okay. There we go. And once we get it on the spool holder back here, we're going to go and just attach it into this little finger right here. Right here like this. And it's going to go and it'll click. There's a little groove right here. It'll click down into it. And you'll actually hear and feel it click. Then there's a little stand here. We're going to put it up in that. Then I'm going to take an empty bobbin, class 15 bobbin, <clears throat> and I am going to thread it. I'm going to get me a, oops, I'm going to trim off. Oh, I'm all thumbs today. Woohoo. I'm going to trim off at the end of that thread so I get a nice clean start. Let me move my keyboard out of the way here. <clears throat> And in these bobbins, there's a hole. And all I want to do is insert this through the hole on the bobbin. Come on, you. Get in there. There we go. And I'm just going to snap it down. Now, this one, I have to hold on to the thread. And I'm just going to hold it straight up above the bobbin. See here? Straight up. I'm going to push it back towards this lever, okay? And then I'm going to hold down on the presser foot, on the, the foot pedal. And once it goes, you can let go of the foot pedal and it'll keep on going. And after you get some on there, I'm going to tap it so it stops and I'm going to trim off my tail thread. My thread tail. <laughs> there we go. And now I will just hold down the foot control and then let go. After it takes about 10 seconds and then you can let go of it. And now it's going. I'm going to fill that bobbin up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's all done. I'm just going to pull it over. I'm going to snip my thread and I'll leave my thread path threaded up here. You could take this thread out now because once again, there is no upper thread to use on this machine. The only thread we use is what's wound on a bobbin, okay? So to open, there's a door here that'll slide open. <clears throat> We're gonna thread the machine next. So <clears throat> what you wanna do, you wanna push this button twice so this bottom light right here, which will be green, will turn on. What that does, that positions the bobbin case so that you can remove the bobbin. One, 
two and hold it in and it stopped then it turned green and now we're going to slide this door open okay now i'm going to switch to another camera so you can see what i'm doing there we go and now all i have to do is open that up and there's my bobbin case not a regular bobbin as in other machines it has a little fuzzy up here it has a, a metal protrusion with two holes in it at the bob bottom so i'm going to take out my bobbin i was previously using and set it to the side and then here is the one that i just wound and those are both 40 weight threads so i really should not have to adjust the bobbin tension so when you insert it you want to look at that bobbin and you want it to come down like this okay kind of like it's making the letter the number nine is the best way to describe it. it should hang over if you're looking at it it should hang over the right edge and come straight down like this and then it will go into the bobbin cases so okay up through this little notch right here just like a any other machine but now I'm gonna pull out about 10 inches 10 to 12 inches now we're gonna thread the end of that thread through those two those holes that go all the way through those two flanges and we're just gonna thread those through we're gonna thread those through there we go <coughs> excuse me now we're ready to insert this bobbin case back in. Now the fuzzies go on top and those two metal flanges, I'm going to lower this and adjust this camera so you can get a good look at this. Okay. If you see <clears throat> right up in there, right above my finger, there is a slot that these two metal flanges will go into. And what I'm going to do, I'm going <clears> to <throat> put the two metal flanges at about 7 o'clock and I'm going to turn it in a counterclockwise direction and you'll hear it click right there. You, you can actually feel it go in and seat inside that little metal notch, the notch in that metal flange right there. Once it's up there, I'm going to hold on to this tail like so, and I'm going to rotate my hand hole towards me. And it just grabbed the thread right there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sweep it over here to the side, and that will pull my that will bring my bobbin thread up to the top of the machine. I'm going to shut the door and there's a little met there's a little groove right here you can see that groove watch this you put it down into that groove and pull it towards you and it will cut it it also puts that thread under tension okay I'm gonna set the stitch length on three length and three spacing and I'm just going to do a test sew to make sure it's forming a stitch before we go over to our quilt. Okay. So here we go. Lower the presser foot. It'll take a couple of stitches for it to pull, but it is now forming a stitch. Yay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to stop for a moment and I'm going to pull the camera a little bit closer so you can actually get a better look at this process. You can see the stitches back here where it's formed. I'm going to go as slow as I can. But you can see that thread. This, this needle is like a latch hook, so it pulls a loop of bobbin thread up. And then when it goes back down, it forms a knot on the bottom side. Each stitch forms a knot. And then that really secures the stitches. It's a very strong stitch. Okay. 
So to stop, <clears throat> what you do is you raise the foot and you pull your thread to the back, okay? And then once you bring it to the back, you're gonna sweep it over here to this, this groove and that's how you break off your thread. Now check that out. Does that not look like I just hand stitched all that? The hand looks stitched with metallic thread. And on the back, it just looks like a regular straight stitch. Okay. So now we're ready to actually quilt on a quilt with this metallic thread. Oops. And I'm going to get this under here. Now what I'm going to quilt, uh, this is partially quilted. This is a sample quilt. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the edge. I'm going to use the edge of the presser foot. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> just follow the seams on this to do some quilting. That's one way to do it. And I'm just going, let's see here. Let me hold this up for a minute. Here we go. I'm going to come all the way up here to this top. And I'm going to go all the way down this seam line from one end to the other. Okay. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And we're going to get started. Now, another thing I'm going to do, I am going... First I'm going to get started and then I'm going to set it so when I stop, it will stop and needle down. Okay. Now, to stop it and needle down, all I have to do is press it twice real fast. One, two. See how that turned green? Okay. See what the picture looks like? It's now going to stop and needle down. Check it out. And once again, this stitch length here is three, three length, and three on the spacing. And I'm just following the seam right along with the edge of my presser foot, and I'm going to use that as a spacing guide for those right there. <clears throat> now then, let's bring this back up. Okay, we're gonna come out. I'm gonna bring it out to the back. It's caught. There we go. It had, it had, um, made a knot right there and wouldn't progress any further, so I just had to break my thread, which is okay. You can see now I have plenty of thread right here. I'm just gonna bring it back into my little threading tie off, cut that off. I'm gonna take my scrap and make sure it's still forming a stitch. And it is. Okay. And all I did, I pressed the button right here one time to put that needle back in the up position. I'm going to lengthen my stitch to four and I'm going to leave the spacing at three. We're going to pick up where we left off. All I have to do is line up that last stitch with my needle, just basically right there, and we'll be good to go. So if you stop in the middle of the line, you just saw how easy that is to pick up, <clears throat> to pick up where you where you had to stop at. Easy peasy. You never have to back stitch or anything because remember, each time it makes a stitch, it makes a little knot on the back of your fabric, or in this case, on your quilt. The knots, the knots are so tiny with proper tension, they're buried in the batting, so you don't have to worry 
about um, the not showing on the back of your quilt. Now this is not a fast machine as you can see. I'm going slow on purpose so you can see how that works on camera. I'm going to stop. I'm going to bring that lens a little bit closer and get a better look at it. Here we go. This little quilt here is has a ton of techniques on it. I've done a lot of demos on this quilt for different different live demos. <clears throat> here, right here, was actually something done in an embroidery hoop with IQ Designer. Now this particular thread, it did not like the three and three stitch length. The three stitch length, it likes the four and three. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna leave it at four and I'm gonna turn my spacing down to two so the stitches are a little bit closer together. You can see right here what the stitches look like. Right there's what we're doing right now. Okay. This is a very relaxing <clears throat> machine to sew on. <clears throat> because once again, you are not not rushing to get something done on this. This you are actually emulating hand quilting when you quilt on a Sasha coat machine. You can also use this machine to texturize fabrics or create different types of Sasha Co effects like you would do Sasha Co by hand even. This machine, this is the only machine on the market that does this particular stitch. Many machines try to copy the Sasha Co stitch, but they are not the same. <clears throat> I come from a hand quilting background and I can tell you on the front of your quilt you cannot tell that it was stitched on a machine. It looks exactly like hand quilting. I'm almost to the end of this seam line. I'm a giddy up and go since we're almost there, right? So one way you could quilt a quilt, <clears throat> and you cannot do true free motion quilting on this machine. However, one, one method to quilt a quilt, especially when you're doing them, when you used to do a lot of them by hand, is we would follow the seam, the seam lines on the quilt top itself and use that as a guide for our quilting. I can get a better look at that one. Oh, that's pretty. Let me back up my camera. Get you a good look at that. Those stitches right there. Right there they are. Isn't that pretty? And it truly does look just like hand quilting. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Now when I'm talking about the stitch length and stitch spacing, check it out. Here's what I'm talking about right here. This lever controls the length of the stitch. This lever controls the spacing in between the stitch, okay? The threading mechanism like we did earlier, here's a top-down view of it. There's your threading path to wind your bobbin. It also has presser, the yeah, pressure, pre, presser foot pressure. And what this does is adjust the height of the foot. So I have it on two. If you were like just sewing, you can actually just, you can piece quilts on this machine. You can do anything with this machine that you can do with a straight stitch machine. It's just that the stitches will always look like hand stitches on the top. It makes a very strong seam. I have pieced entire quilt tops using this machine. You can even make garments with it. I did a workshop in Naples, Florida at Flash Sew and Quilt, and we actually made kimonos and tote bags 
and we made a quilted machine mat for our Sashiko machines in that class. Okay, so next, I'm gonna do an opposite line just on the other side, but this time I'll line up my presser foot on the opposite side. So I get a, I'm gonna do a parallel line of quilting down here. I'm gonna change the stitch length on it though. So we can see what that looks like. I'm gonna go a five length and I'm gonna leave it at a number two spacing. I like that number two spacing. Okay, and here we go. And whichever machine, if you do any machine quilting at all, and I'm not talking about long arms here, but you want the feed dogs to actually feed the fabric in. You should never pull it from the back or push it in from the front. The only thing my fingers right here are doing, I am just guiding, gently guiding the fabric. That's it. So if I was to do this entire quilt, I could quilt down each side of the seam in every direction for the entire piecing of this quilt. And that would be, would make a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. We'll see how she goes. She's going to giddy up and go here. But this is the longest stitch that it'll make, which is a five millimeter stitch. The previous one that we finished with on this line was a four millimeter stitch. And this is just, this is a, a machine when you're quilting like this, it's really great. You can have, have a Netflix on or normally, I have music playing to listen to when I'm sewing here in my studio and I'm usually by myself. A lot of times I'll listen to classical music or maybe 80s pop. Hey, at the 80s is when I went out and went out to dance clubs and stuff. So yes, I'm a product of that. <sighs> but yeah, so here you go. You can see, you know, it's picked up a little bit of a speed. These stitches here, those were some that I did with a digital dual feed foot. I've got a lot of different types of quilting techniques on this particular little quilt. And this Madeira, um, I love metallic thread. I love blingy stuff. And it works so wonderful in our sewing machines and in this Sasha Co. machine. Um, also, our my baby lock sergers love this Madeira metallic thread. It is, it is good stuff. Okay, there we go. That line, now see I didn't take as long. I went slow on the last one on purpose, just so we could see how stuff was going. Now let's have a look at that now. There we go. There's those two lines of quilting. Now this one, let's see here. This one was the four millimeter and that's the five millimeter. You can see there's just a little bit of difference in the length of that. So then, I mean, these are like four inch piece squares all throughout this. Let me raise this up a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. You can see right there, every, this entire little quilt top is made up of pieced units this size, okay? So one way you could quilt this <clears throat> is just to quilt on each side of the long seams and I'll do, I'm gonna do one in the opposite direction now. We're gonna go down this seam right here. It's gonna be our little focus block, this one, this little block here. So next, I'm gonna just turn my quilt. We're gonna go the other way. Okay. And once again, I'm gonna use the edge of the presser foot along the edge of that, the, uh, line it up with the edge of the seam, edge of this presser foot with the edge of the seam for this next line of quilting. Okay, here we go. Gonna get ready and go here. This time though, I'm going to change the spacing so you can see the difference. We're gonna do 
a five length and a five on the spacing, okay? Let's see what that looks like. One thing about it, with you having the spacing and the length at its longest, it would stitch out a whole lot quicker. And this would be more of a true Sashiko look than the hand quilting look with all that. The bigger the stitch and the larger spacing is something you would see like on Pinterest if you pull up Sashiko or Boho quilting. This is what you're going to see right here. And my thread just decided it wanted to catch and that's okay. So what, what happens is <clears throat> It formed a, uh, the last knot that formed. It got a little bit too tight. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, I can't turn my hand hold towards me right now. So I'm just going to go turn it away from me and then it, then it frees up. And I'm gonna just raise this up and pull it back just a hair. And then I'm gonna get started again. Well, it didn't do it, so it broke the thread. So what I have to do now, I'm gonna pull it straight back Okay, it broke the thread, that's okay. It's still up through there. Now we're gonna put it through our little slot. Gonna bring it back in. And where was I? I was right up here, I think. Here we go. Now see, there's my last stitch. I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see this a little better, what I'm doing here. Okay. Where are you? There you are. I'm gonna line up my needle with the, that right on top of that last stitch where it ended. <coughs> Excuse me. Right there. And I'm gonna start sewing. And now it's forming the stitch. It immediately makes a knot, so guess what? There's nothing to worry about there. And we're just gonna keep on going. Now what I do with wherever I start and stop after I'm done, I'm going to hit it with a drop of fray check. And that will actually, it's, I use that in my quilting a lot. Um, and it will not stain your, I've never had it stain fabric. If you're worried about that, you need to test it on the edge of a scrap of fabric and then let it dry. You'll see it when you first apply it. But once it dries, it dries clear, and it will hold those stitches right in place if you're worried about it. <coughs> Excuse me. It is allergy season for me, everybody. I apologize. Here we go. Hope everyone had a wonderful uh, holiday weekend this last weekend. Almost to the end of that, that line right there. There we go. And now I'm just going to raise my presser foot, pull it straight back, and bring it off to this side of the machine. Right there. Move my camera back. And right there. And we're ready for another line. Now check it out. Let me get this repositioned back up here at the top. And see what I'm doing. I just brought it underneath the presser foot here and then I'm just gonna pull it towards me. And if you're not on camera like I am right here, hello, <laughs> it's way easier to maneuver your quilt. When you're trying to maneuver it around a camera, it's gonna catch your camera and try to move your camera with you like it just did. And I'm just going to go down the other side of it. I like that spacing too. Check that out right there. See that? That's a five, five length and five space right here. Okay. And I'm just going to run a line down the other side. And what I'm gonna do in this quilt, I'm actually, go, each time I finish 
one horizontal double line and one vertical, I'm going to change the color of my metallic thread. Okay. And since this is a scrappy looking quilt, it'll look awesome. Now you're going to see that here. Okay. <clears throat> and you can see by using the edge of that presser foot. Now this is the only presser foot. This is the only foot made for this machine. <clears throat> and it is made with quilters in mind because where the needle drop is, let me press this button twice so the needle stays in the down position. There we go. From the needle to the edge of the presser foot is exactly a quarter inch. Let's see if I can get really close to this so you can see it. There we go. So like I was saying, see that needle and where it's down at right there? From that needle to either edge, either side of that presser foot is a quarter inch. So it's super easy to get a quarter inch seam, whether in quilting or in piecing. <coughs> And then when I take this out, there's also marks on the throat plate here that has a bunch of different sizes for you to use. And there's also a wonderful attachment that I'll show in a future Sashiko video as well. But today it's just about... I'm going to get that needle up. There we go. And we're off. And I just did the same spacing on this one. I, on this quilt, I really like the five and five. I think it looks really nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, right here is some the serpent, I used the serpentine stitch on my baby box sewing machine with the digital dual feed foot and did some quilting that way with that. That's a wonderful stitch to quilt with as well. But this is a, I tell you, this is such a relaxing way to quilt. I mean, with free, I do a lot of free motion quilting, but oh my gosh, and especially when I'm doing a customer quilt, it's like, oh my gosh, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. And it's a, it can be a little stressful quilting that way. This is not stressful at all. Use your seam lines to either quilt on each side of the seam or we can do what's called point to point. And I'll show that here in a minute, what point to point quilting is. Okay, there we go. Now, let me back this up for just a second. There's my junction spot right here. And what I mean by that, let me get that camera down right there. Right here is where the line's going horizontally and vertically across the vertical, the horizontal. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to widen another bobbin <clears throat> and change my, my thread color. Yes, so let me grab another spool of thread. I'm just going to bring my thread box over here. This is all my, my metallic um, Madeira Glamour metallic threads. And let's see, what color are we going to do here this time? Oh, I'm going to put purple in next. I think. You see what I already have? I'm going to do this one. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that one there. Isn't that pretty? We're going to use that thread next. Okay. <coughs> Grab another bobbin. And where are you, bobbins? Maybe over here on the Solaris. We're resetting the studio, so sorry about that, but it has, I have stuff everywhere. Okay, I know where I have to get this at. Maybe in my drawer. Or not. Okay. So, and I haven't went nowhere, everybody. I'm just trying to grab me an empty bobbin without having to unwind one. Here, I'm going to grab these. So, 
So I'm using a generic class 15. And it worked just fine, you'll see. Okay. So I'm going to swap to my other camera. There we go. And then we're going to we're going to we're going to use this has blue and purple and gold has a bunch of pretty colors in it. This will be pretty on there. I'm going to take out this this last thread that we use for bobbin thread for a thread. Set that to the side and put this one up there. Get that little cap on there so it stays in place. On this machine, that's very important. And then I'm just going to go through the threading path for the bobbin winding. There we go. I'm going to snip off the end of it, thread it through the hole on the bobbin. <clears throat> I find if you hold that bobbin so the, the white plastic of the machine, you can see that, that hole really easily and push it back. Pre hold down the presser foot for 10 seconds. And it'll keep on going. And once it's on there a ways, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to trim it. There we go. Hold down that, that foot control. And after 10 seconds, it will just keep on going. You can remove your foot. <clears throat> and easy peasy, just like that. Now, if you were, if you're doing a bit, if you weren't going to change your thread color so much, you could sit here and just wind you a bunch of bobbins before you got started. Okay, so that's done. Let's open that back up. Now remember, I have to set, use this button to set the bobbin so that I can remove it. So press this twice on the second one, hold it in. Green light, open the side door, remove the bobbin. Let's go to this other camera. Here we go. Here we go. Gonna remove that bobbin. See, I still had some bobbin thread. I could have done at least one more line on it. Now, the great thing about this, I could put this in my, my Altair, my Solaris, any machine that takes a class 15 bobbin, which is a really great thing. And now I'm going to insert that in. Thread it through the little metal flanges. May have to trim it again. Let's see. Come on, you get in there. There it went. There it went. Right there, like that. Okay, so it goes from the bobbin side all the way through, front to back. Get you about 12 inches, about a 12 inch tail. <clears throat> and the fuzzy part goes on top. Set it, set the fuzzy part at about 2 o'clock insert it and as you're gently pushing in and rotate it counterclockwise you'll feel the metal the metal flanges go into its slot right there and it just kind of clicked and there we go <clears throat> now i'm going to hold up <coughs> i'm going to swap to the other camera i'm going to hold up on my tail thread and turn the hand wheel towards me. Then on, usually on that second time it will pull up a loop of thread on the needle. And I'm going to use my scissors and just gently sweep it out to the left and what that does that pulls up the thread from the bobbin to the top of the machine. 
Come here, you. Yeah. It pulls up the thread from the bobbin to the top of the machine. There we go. Shut the door. And then remember the little slot over here. The slot down and pull it back to you. And it cuts your thread and it puts this thread under tension. That thread has to be under tension for it to form a stitch. Okay, now we're going to do a quick test sew to make sure everything's working right. Let's get this little camera closer so you can see what's going on here. There we go. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna giddy up and go. I still have it set at five and five. And there it just pulled up a thread, but it stopped. It's okay. Sometimes when it first starts, it wants to be a little persnickety. And that's okay, it's allowed to do that. Here we go. And what we do, I just we'll just re-thread it through the, the wire through the thread cutter again. And that's why I always start it off right in the beginning on a piece of starter cloth so I can make sure it's going to get going without any issues. Yeah, it's not liking that thread for some reason. I may not have my bottom in there just right. So, as you can see, it can happen to anybody. Oh, I see what it's doing. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to reopen my bobbin door. There we go. One, two. Okay. Let's open this up. Now I'm going to hold on to this. Turn that hand wheel towards me. No, it is caught right there like it's supposed to. So, let's just shut that and we're going to go again. Okay. I'm going to make sure it goes slow. There we go. Now she's forming a stitch. Until right there. So yay, you know it never fails. You've, those of you that have followed me, you know, if you don't, haven't realized by now, off camera, everything is easy peasy and it runs nice and smooth. However, when you're on camera, if something wants to give you an issue, it's gonna happen when you're on camera, okay? I'm just gonna take that bobbin out I'm going to re-thread it. Hold on a minute here. Make sure I have no threads in the bobbin case. Oh, it's got a jam now. Big jam in it. Okay. So I'm going to turn it off. You get to see me take the bobbin case apart. <laughs> That's always fun. Here we go. Okay. I can't get that thread out. It's caught in here somewhere. So, how to remove the bobbing case. This will be a good one for you to see. Because eventually, if you have one of these machines, eventually it will happen to you. So, you see these two black levers right here? Want to go that way, and then one this way. And then you can just take this whole mechanism out. Okay. So there's the two parts to your bobbin case. Okay. Or your, your bobbin, your, this is actually called the race. This is called the bobbin case right here. Okay. So what we're going to do, this has, and when I took all that out, it, it was, there was some of this thread was caught up in this part of the mechanism. It just happens sometimes, no rhyme or reason. But when that does happen, you just 
there's a piece of thread caught up in there and that's what's causing it to break. And now all I have to do is reassemble it, but you know what? While it's open, I'm gonna put it in a drop of oil. Maybe if I can find the oil, oh, there it is. <laughs> I hadn't planned on doing this on camera today. But you see right up in here, this is where we want to put a drop of oil, just right there. There's a drop of oil. And now, next, we're going to put this part in, okay? You, ca you can't put them both in at the same time. It just won't work out well for you. I'm just kind of moving this around to give myself some room. Now, <clears throat> Right there, there's a little yellow dot. That is where these metal flanges fit in. Oops, just take that bobbin all the way out. So check this out, I'm gonna explain this so you can see it easy. Okay, there we go. There's the yellow dot. That bobbin case fits into this. It's onto this right here like this. When it's properly seated, it goes on. Those metal flanges line up with that notch in that race. It'll go all the way in like that, right there. That is how that is supposed to fit in. If it doesn't fit in like that, it will never form a proper stitch, okay? So first we're gonna put this in See that pointed part right up here? That goes to the top. So hold on to the middle portion. And it'll go right there like that. There it is. I'm going to show you what that looks like set back in. There it is. Now that'll come out real easy, see? So you're going to put it in. I'm trying to get the best camera angle so you can see this. Right here like so. And it'll, it'll get fit in there and you'll feel it because it'll be level with the surrounding metal, okay? There we go. And once it's in there properly, it will stay in there on its own unless you, unless you vibrate the table or, or it touches. But there it is. Now, <clears throat> this goes on next. See that little metal protrusion there and there? That's the point, that's the side that comes out. This side goes in. And all you're gonna do is do this. It'll just set right in there. It'll only fit one way. And then you're gonna slide Oh, I know my hand's in the way. So you're going to slide those little metal flanges, get one end to hold it in place. <clears throat> right there, I just slid that from here to there, and now I'll do this one over here. <coughs> and there they are. That's what holds them in place. Now we can reassemble our bobbin into our bobbin case. <clears throat> from here to the back, front to back. Come on you, there you go. And trust me, if you don't, if you don't thread this bobbin case in the proper direction, it's not gonna form a stitch. You will know immediately as far as that goes. And once again, the little fuzzy part at, at about one o'clock, and then you're going to to rotate it counterclockwise until it's until you hear it click and it kind of sits in. There we go. Check it out. Get you a big good close look at it there. You can see right by that yellow dot, there's that little metal flange that I had to put the bobbin thread through, that double flange. Okay. 
So back to the other camera. I'm going to hold on to this thread about 12 inches right here. Turn the hand wheel towards me. Down and up. There, it just came up again. Now I can just sweep it. That's what I call sweeping the thread. That pulls the thread all the way up to the top. Shut the door. Put it down in the groove and pull it towards you. It'll cut the thread and you should, we should be ready to go. Now let's see if that help matters any. Okay. I see some fuzzies right there. Make sure we get off to the best possible start. There we go, here we go. It just pulled up the thread and it just locked up again. Well, for whatever reason, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and make y'all watch me take this apart and put it back together a hundred times. I'm just going to pull it up and pull it to the back. There we go. Let's try it again. And see, if I was filming this, I would edit out this entire part of this video. <laughs> and when you do it live, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, so. Get this just how I want it. There we go. Let's give it another go here. Better on scrap fabric than on my quilt though, right? Here we go. Now we're off. We're off and running. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. Now it's doing it. Let's go another way here. Just to make sure. Of course, I did have to brag on it, right? <laughs> you know, that's part of it. it. It might just be, I don't know what it is. It might just be that particular, let me fill something here. So since this is just a double layer of flannel, I'm going to try it on my quilt sandwich. It may it may just not like that flannel for whatever reason, but we're going to give it a give it a shot on this. But up till now, what I have done is how I would, is how I would quilt this entire quilt. Let's see here. We are going to go this way. I'm going to get pull up a closer camera angle here in just a moment. Okay. I have found that the Sasha Co machine, it like the more layers you put under it, the happier it is. I know that's most sewing machines are not like that, but this machine likes likes to likes to do a lot of layers. Let's get that close up cam. There we go. And <clears throat> let's get started. Once again, I am doing the five stitch length and the five millimeter spacing. Those numbers on the front of this machine, those are millimeters. Okay, so we had a pretty good run there. And really, everybody, that is all there is to all there is to quilting on the Sasha Co. So it did just this, this particular thread, this particular spool of thread, for whatever reason, is stopping a lot. So what I'm going to do, just to show you the diff what the difference is in the threads, 
I'm gonna cut this. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm gonna put in a different thread. So we can go on with this, this little demonstration here. So that was the Madeira metallic thread. <coughs> And I'll tell you, it has been a while since I changed the needle in it. That could be the lap shook, but it looks really good. It's not bird or anything. For whatever reason, <coughs> for whatever reason, this particular um, bobbin of thread, <coughs> excuse me, is nodding up quite a bit for me. It's catching. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in <clears throat> this bobbin here. This is this is rayon embroidery thread, and we're going to see how that works. We're going to play with this one a little bit. that bobbin threaded oops well, I had it and I pulled it right back out let's get that bobbin threaded here we go okay it's threaded now let's get it inserted back into the machine hold up on the tail Turn the hand wheel towards me. There we go. Sweep it to the left. Okay. And we're good to go on that one now. Okay. So I'm going to pick up where we left off on our previous line of stitching. Where is it? <laughs> Excuse me, dadgummit. There we go, right there. I'm going to make sure my needle drops right where the last stitch ended. And we're going to keep on going. Okay. So let me get this move back over here. And we're going to do some more stitching. I'm not going to touch the stitch, the stitch length or anything. We're just going to keep on going. There we go. I think I had another, I think I still have a piece of metallic thread up in that bobbin. And I just can't do a full clean on it like I would if with all the cameras around me. I don't have enough room. But no, it's sewing fine now. <clears throat> it was just that particular spool of thread. I should have just took off about, I don't know, four or five yards off of the end of the cap. And it would probably would have been fine at that point. Okay, so I'm going to keep on going. I'm just repositioning my hands here. Let's bring it up a little bit. Look at this is a cool stitch. Check this out. This is actually one of the built-in decorative stitches. Isn't that pretty? And then this was done with a cording foot, either on the Solaris or my Altair, one of the two. Okay, so we're just gonna go right over the top of all that. We'll see how that works. Just fine. So when it pulls up that loop from the bottom, it actually makes a stitch with two strands of thread on top. I don't think I said that earlier. That's a really pretty cool. We'll see what this looks like here in just a minute. Embroidery thread is also a wonderful choice to put through the Sasha Co. Now check this out. <clears throat> Hold on. I'm gonna bring it this way. You can see that stitching right there. There it is, right here, five and five. And let me 
see something here. Hold on just a second. Participants. Okay. So, I'm going to do another line on this on the other side, but I'm going to do the smallest with this one. I'm going to do, watch what I, look what I did here. I did stitch length of two millimeters and a stitch spacing of two. This setting here will most closely resemble true hand, hand quilting. Because I remember when I hand quilted, you wanted your stitches small and you really wanted almost 10 stitch, stitch rotations to the inch. <coughs> is what people strive for in hand quilting. <coughs> okay. And we're going to go now. This will take a little bit longer because the stitches are so small. We're going to get started here. And she's off to a good start. You can see that metal bar that that finger that goes real close to the needle, that's what holds the loop of thread up as it's forming the stitch. Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> now, the way I have this bobbin set up, I can put anything from 50 weight all the way to a 30 weight thread through it. What I just had in there, that metallic, that is a 12 weight thread, and I never adjusted the tension on the bobbin. I actually think that's probably something I should have done with the metallic, is adjusted the bobbin tension. We'll do that in a future episode. See, I'm just mirroring, mirroring <laughs> say that real fast. I'm mirror, mirroring, <laughs> I'm using the seam lines as a guide for my quilting stitches. I'm not seeing anything in the chat window. I think I'm going to have to check a setting after this live stream is over because I had some been having technical some technical difficulties getting these live streams on YouTube started. So there we go. We're at the end, and I think you're really going to love what this looks like. I know I do because I've done these before, but I want you to see. You'll see the difference. Let me find a good place it'll show up on this quilt. Maybe right here. Okay. You'll see the difference. This is a be a good great example. This here, this line right here. <coughs> excuse me. That's the largest. That's five millimeter length, five millimeter spacing. Right here, I'm gonna get this out a little bit more in the light so we can see if you go. It'll show up my camera better. Okay. Here is, right here, this is 5 millimeter length, 5 millimeter spacing. Right here, 2 millimeter length, 2 millimeter spacing. And those stitches are tiny. I'm going to bring that, you can kind of, you can see it there. I'm going to bring it in as close as I can with it staying in focus so you can get a much better look. Now, let me just let it sit still for a moment. <clears throat> I have autofocus turned off on this particular camera. There we go. You can see it now. 
there's those tiny little handbook quilt stitches. Isn't that pretty? That tr This stitch right here, two millimeter length, two millimeter spacing, looks the most like true hand quilting of any stitch. This here is more of a traditional Sashiko stitch, the, the five millimeter length. Pretty cool. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you some of the other techniques I've done on this particular little project here. Check this out. See that circle of thread? I actually used a circular sewing attachment to achieve that. That was not done in the hoop. Right here. It just makes a nice circle in that area. I used this as a these are all decorative quilting techniques. So if you have a circular attachment for your sewing machine, you can actually use any decorative stitch and do decorative quilting with it. That's what this is right here. This over here, however, these lines right here, these dark lines, that is actually a chain stitch on a serger slash cover stitch machine. It takes two, co two threads and what it does on top, how I did this, it actually looks like a little crochet chain on the very top of that. See that there? This stitch right here, this is a stitch done in the hoop on my embroidery machine, okay? That's a really cool stitch as well it's also called a chain stitch in embroidery. But look at look at those stitches. Aren't those cool? I just love how those look. And that's a variegated quilting thread is what this is. That thread right there is a variegated um, Madeira arrow quilt thread is what this one here is. Okay. But that is what this episode was about. I just wanted to show you how super easy it is to quilt on this wonderful machine. And let me see here. Let me go back to and see that angle right there. Yes, and you know it has about oh, about a nine inch throat space right here. So you could actually, if you were gonna do a larger quilt on it, you would just roll it up like this okay to maneuver that through okay so you can, you can put, get a lot of quilt rolled up underneath this 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 is called the harp on your machine <clears throat> okay so everybody wait a minute here this one here there we go hello there <laughs> i want to thank you so much for tuning in today I will be doing I will be doing a whole series of videos on this machine here over the coming months. <clears throat> if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. That is the easy and I'll make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications from my channel. That way you will know when I have scheduled a live stream or I have posted new videos. I post new filmed videos that I edit every day right now, which I'm getting ready to film some more serger videos as we speak. So thank you everybody for tuning in on this, this episode of, of our Sashiko series. Have a super great day. Thank you. And my next live is this Friday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time daylight time. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.